What do you get when you take a boy from New Mexico, move him to Dell City, Texas, put him on a huge farm with a wife and kids? You get our next guest on the Stress For You show, my friend, Jay Hill. Hey, Mr. Matt. How's it going, brother? Welcome to podcast number 35. You Holy are the man, God. the myth, the legend on the podcast today. I don't I don't know about any of those. I mean, 35, that's almost my age. That makes me feel kind of fitting, you know. 35, <laughs> you, you're crushing the podcast world. You're out there stamping them. I like one, it. One week at a time. One week at a time. There you go. Well, it kind of seems like you might know a person or two, so it's you know, finding somebody might not be that difficult until well, you well, have um, number 35 and you're like, uh, oh, um, gee. Hmm. Who could we get? I don't know. Uh, no, are you kidding me? We had to perfect it before we had someone of your uh, status and level uh, come on our oh, show. Oh, yeah. <clears throat> Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you're, you're, you're kind of a first time here too because um, Katie couldn't be on the show today. Rich can't be on the show today. So it's just me and you having a conversation about ag stress life how's that how's hey, that sit with you i'm i'm, I'm in with it. the fact that katie's not here i'm kind of want my money back <laughs> yeah I'll, I'll send you back double what i'm paying you oh you <laughs> generous man you <laughs> <laughs> you know that's right <laughs> oh, uh, well and i like something that you said uh th- before we hardly ever get the chance to do this so we had to schedule a uh, a zoom uh, meeting recording time to actually be able to have a conversation with each other so that we stop long enough to be able to chat so thank you for your time i know what you've got going on we'll get into that in a little bit but thank you for your time today and really and truly brother i appreciate you doing this for us and and being a guest hey man this is a this is attempt number two so it's nice to actually get our feet landed on this thing so, okay, so let's just talk about that then. So here we are talking about stress and how we eliminate stress from our lives. Would you mind telling everyone what happened the last time we tried to record you as a guest on the Stress Free You show? Yeah, we had uh, just sat down and got ready to roll. And you had just done the intro. and I was so excited, ready to rock. And then the uh, fire pager goes off and it turns out that some lady decided that she was going to hunt her car off of the highway at 85 miles an hour. She's totally fine. But, uh, you know, being a, a volunteer fire department firefighter, we had to run out there and <laughs> get her out. So. <laughs> so I just thought it was a little bit ironic here. We're talking about how to eliminate stress from your life or how you deal with stress and a fire alarm pager goes off as we're starting to record. So, you that's, know, maybe a little prophetic there. It's like a party every day. Life is a party every day. True story. Hey, so tell everyone a little bit about like, give them your background and tell them like a little bit about where you're from and what and where you're at now. And and then we'll go from there. Yeah. So uh, grew up in Southern New Mexico, grew up in the Las Cruces area and uh, grew up on a little hobby farm that my mom and dad had. My dad worked for a technical school company as a uh, recruiter for kids to go to an HVAC automotive, diesel tech. Uh, there's a couple other things that this school offered, but a vocational school. And so he would run around the state of New Mexico and far West Texas and recruit kids. My mom was working um, part-time as a secretary and then part-time as a dragon wrangler for me and my siblings. And, um, and so I grew up on that little 10 acre spot and I just really wanted to be in agriculture, I knew that God had called me to do something in that, that space, but I didn't know what that space was going to be. And I knew that it was going to be something that was going to be um, a challenge, to say the least. But I didn't, I didn't know where I was going to go with it. I didn't know, you know who I was going to meet or who I was going to see. And, um, and so at age 16, Dad kind of helped me prepare myself to take the reins. I uh, took the reins at 16 and... You fast forward now and we've got multiple entities that that make up who we are. I've got multiple businesses and business partners of who makes us, but uh, we farm about 18,000 acres between Las Cruces and Del City, Um, 120 full-time employees, uh, the best employees ever, Um, and uh, married with a uh, unbelievable, married to an unbelievable woman, and uh, I've got two dragons of my own now, and... uh, (laughs) And that's, it's just, it's just so fun. I mean, life is, life is what you'll allow it to be. And uh, it's, 
it's been a lot of ups and downs, but at the same time, the ups have definitely uh, have outcrested it down. So, um, so say something again. How many acres and how many employees? We got. We're farming a little, a little over eighteen thousand, um, and we are one hundred and twenty strong. Yeah, yeah. So um, the average farmer in America probably farms around i don't i'm guessing the number here probably a thousand acres right yeah i don't know that number i, w- I would think it'd be some th- somewhere it's in that, a- that that range you're farming nineteen thousand, and you have over 120 employees how in the world are you doing that and what kind of stresses is that putting on your soul brother oh my gosh that that will get to the, that will get to the root of stress but at the same time um, I, I've seen my phone blow up three times while we're, while we're sitting here. And, um, and honestly, I've been so blessed with good people. I've been so blessed with my dad and I've been so blessed with my brother. Uh, my dad and I are partners in a couple of businesses. Uh, the, the big farm, um, we're not partners on, but at the same time, uh, my brother is, my brother actually works for us here. And, uh, and just knowing that those two are my core on, on the front line and then I've got a great management team. And so that a lot of the stuff, you know, gets passed through the ranks to these different guys and that keeps the stress in check at least. Oh, that's perfect. Hey, uh, tell everybody a little bit about your dad because I think your dad is one of the coolest cats in the history of mankind. I, and just a little background, I got to meet Jay's dad and mom when I was uh, running for public office in New, in New Mexico in 2010, uh, got to meet them. They hosted several fundraisers at their house for me. Uh, your dad threw the tri-tip on the grill and had the whole gang there. And we did, we just did several amazing events. And w- he was just one of those, one of those individuals that I've only been around actually, if I counted up a few times in my life uh, during that. And then when I was living in Las Cruces, we'd see each other uh, occasionally. But he just had one of those, he's just one of those guys that has that impact on your soul that's just so cool. So tell everybody about your dad. Yeah, yeah, sheesh. I mean, how do you even begin? So dad's going to be 80 this year. Um, what? Still, yeah, he's going to be 80 this year. And he is, uh, he's still farming full steam ahead. Um, talked to him a couple days ago, it was 4 o'clock in the morning, and he was bailing hay, you know, and I'm like, dad, do you think it's time? to get somebody to run that baler for you like you know can we start looking for and he's like nah. he's like i got it you know and he'll go home and take a cat nap and uh, my dad has never met a stranger and uh, he grew up in tennessee he grew up in spring city tennessee uh, when you think of poverty go ahead and go two floors below that one and that's what he grew up in no running water no electricity uh, held this milk in a stream they cured their ham. Uh, they got uh, two pairs of shoes, excuse me, one pair of shoes a year. They cut the toes out of their other pair that they'd grown out of, and they use that to play. And, you know, I mean, just crazy things that, wow. that we'll hopefully never experience, but at the same time, um, never had anybody to guide him or direct him. Never had anybody that would show him, you know, this don't do this or don't do that. It was more of let's try this. And if it works then great, if it doesn't, and he's been very successful. And I'm not talking about just financially, but uh, his life has been fulfilled in the fact that he's done everything that he's wanted to do. And he's raised us to do everything we want to do. Wow. Talk about a guy that, that didn't let stress get him down, but built upon it. I've seen him. I've seen him stressed. You know, I mean, I've seen him. We've, we've, we've had those days where the, the rubber hits the road, you know, where the bank is breathing down your neck and you don't know how you're going to make payroll. And those, you know, we've been, we've been there before and uh, man, he's just a guy that can power. He can just power through those situations. Um, And and it's made a lot of difference in my life, understanding that, yeah, there's going to be some bad days, some bad weeks, bad months. You're going to have a couple bad years, Uh, but attitude, persistence, the way you treat people, uh, the way you interact with people, uh, and the relationship that you have with God will definitely be those things that that will pull you through. And so, I've tried to instill the good pieces, the good pieces from Him, 
into our operation. And, um, and some days we have them and some days we don't depends on what kind of grace we're, <laughs> we're working with. Oh, no doubt. Right. Well, I appreciate that. And I, and you just, you tell your dad that I appreciate him and he's uh he's one of those guys that just made an impression on me as well. So uh, you tell him I said, hello. I will. He'll be here today. Oh, perfect. Hey, so tell her, so we have listeners all over the world. Uh, we've got listeners in other countries. Uh, most of them in are in the U S but we do have listeners everywhere. So tell everybody a little bit about, tell our non ag, non farming community, tell them a little bit about the ag life. And I know that's a big question. And I know that's a huge open-ended question, but uh, just, just give them a little bit of background about what you deal with the kind of, uh, let's, let's narrow it down. Give everybody the, the, um, the stresses that you have to deal with in agriculture. Yeah. Right? So let's look at, let's look at stresses in agriculture. <laughs> Whiskey, please. <laughs> oh, sorry. It's seven o'clock in the morning. Whiskey, please. Oh, I'm kidding. Yeah, yeah. Um, so uh, it, it's, so uh, it, it can make you feel that way. That's for sure. <laughs> Absolutely. Um, no, but it, while, while it's, it's difficult, uh, it's also extremely a blessing. So, so first and foremost, you have to deal with uh, what, what's the weather going to throw at you? Uh, what's the climate? What's the, the geography and the topography? What are uh, the current situations with, you know, what, what am I facing? So how much water do I have underneath my feet? How much water is going to fall from the sky? Um, you know, what is my uh, power usage and what kind of surcharges am I getting for using so much uh, energy? As far as environmental impact, making sure that I'm making decisions on my farm based on what's better for the environment. Uh, one of the things that I've sworn to live by, and this is something that, again, my dad taught me, was we are going to leave this place better than we found it. Uh, if you borrowed a piece of equipment, if you used a guy's tool, when you return it, it's in better shape than when you borrowed it or it's better shape than when you found it. And if you can't do that, um, then don't, then just don't use it or don't try it or don't be a farmer if you can't leave the environment in a better, better condition. So, uh, trying to make sure that we are environmentally friendly, honestly, you know, I mean, everybody doesn't want to talk about the environmental aspect of it, but we've got to have talks about what are we using? How are we, how we're using it? You know, those kind of things. I and mean, then how are we marketing it? Um, stresses of, of agriculture are really this, that we've gotten to a point in my opinion, that we've gotten to a point in agriculture where people feel more compelled to grow a crop, uh, not having any control of what the final destination is going to be because that's what they've always done instead of taking ownership of what they're doing. And, uh, and, and we just kind of ride with the, with the ripples all the way through. And, uh, and so for us, it's marketing. Uh, we've got to be bigger, faster, stronger in the fact that we've got to be able to understand the crop that we have in the field. Uh, where is that crop going? Uh, how is it going to get there? Is there a chance for us to handle that in the, in the uh, intermediary temp time? Can we, can we put it on our truck or can we put it on a train from our rail or can we, you know, whatever we're going to do, is it going to our customer? If it's not, then how do we get that customer? Uh, that's kind of how I've always valued or viewed agriculture is uh, it's a business. Right? It is a blessing to do. The fact that I get to wake up in the morning and walk out on my back porch with a cup of coffee with nothing on but a smile if I so wish and, and just be grateful for what we've got going on every day is amazing. But at the same time, um, you're always at war with your neighbor, like it or not. Um, I do not know a single farmer that doesn't have a bone to pick with somebody else. Um, so that's my, that's my 2020 mission is I don't want to, I don't want to have a bone to pick with anybody uh, when it comes into to farming. You know, if I can be helpful and, and help my neighbor, even though I haven't always liked him, I'm going to work on that. Um, but we, we live in a, a time in agriculture where we're jealous because of social media. We get to see other people's things and a lot of people get to see what we do on our farm. Uh, and we, we have 75 tractors and we've got, all these balers and swathers and great parvers. You look at all of the stuff that we have going on and what we're doing and people are like, Oh, well, Jay was just, you know, that was given, I was jealous. Was blah, blah, blah. And I do the same thing. I get on there and I'm like, Oh my gosh, this guy's got, he's got a brand new King airplane. I'm like, how in the world did you get a plane? You know, and it, it, it's the same thing. So not falling into those pitfalls of trying to keep up with the Jones is not falling into pitfalls uh, of, of just running, um, not just running your brain in a direction that's going to cause more stress. 
Mm. You know, if if you don't if you don't run in a direction, and, and that's the thing is, I mean, look at the suicide rate in, in farmers, um, which which I haven't heard any since COVID's come out. You know, I haven't heard a whole lot of the stats, but when I was following Matt's coattails around the country, he's speaking to people. One of the big things was, you know, people were talking about the suicide rate in farmers, and it's because we've gotten to a point where all of this builds. You know, if you're a animal producer, then you've got all of the the pitas and the uh, not necessarily just that, but you have just people that are interested in what the process is, and if they don't understand the process, they tend to lash out um, because they haven't they haven't truly understood what's happening. And uh, money's been tight for a couple of years. Everybody made a lot of money, you know, in uh, 11, 12, 13. And now it's back to, hey, we need to, we need to tighten up. We need to tighten up even more. Oh, we need to buy a smaller belt. Um, so it, it's, there's a lot of stress in, involved. <laughs> we, we came up with a list of common stressors, common stressors on the farm. Workload. Too much to do, too little time to do it. Weather, financial pressures, large debt loads, livestock well-being, erratic markets, increased government regulations, long working hours, disagreements with other family uh, members on an operation, uncertain crop yields and forage production, machinery breakdowns, handling dangerous goods, lack of rest, technology, the good and the bad, and unreasonable personal pressure and or goals you set on yourself. Mm. I mean, that's, that's, a, that's a very extensive list. But don't you and, think you could probably take that list and boil it down into two things? Or three okay, what, things? what would you boil them down into? So I would, I would, if I boiled that whole list down, it would be interaction with your family. So first and foremost, why are you farming? And if it does not involve your family and your family does not feel involved in what you're doing, then you're on a sh- selfish mission. Like why, why if, if my wife didn't want to be a part of what I was doing or if my kids weren't able to see their dad ever, then I probably don't need to be doing what I'm doing right now. Um, time boils down to everything else. If technology is failing you or if technology is helping you, then that's going to enable your time management to be better or worse. That's also going to come down to how many employees you have and stresses of that, how much time you have for how many animals you have. And then the last is finances. And if you're going to look at finances, everybody's going to have their own threshold. But at the same time, if you're not going to be able to at least return 18% on your money, then why in the world are you actually playing this business? Like if we can't, if we, if we can't bring 18% home uh, and we can't pay ourselves without an operating line, I don't think we're in the right boat. So how'd you, how'd you come, how how did you, how have you dealt with all that? Because, because I've been to the point where uh, I I didn't sleep at all. I, I don't sleep anyway, but at the same time, I was at the point where I was miserable because I wasn't getting any rest. Sleep and rest are two totally different things, but rest you can rest while you're driving down the road, not closing your eyes and flying off the highway 85 miles an hour, like our last friend did last week. But <laughs> it, at the same time, rest, rest is knowing that your soul is in the right spot, knowing that you're in the right spot, taking uh, in your situ- situational awareness and saying, this is where I'm supposed to be. This is what I'm supposed to be doing. Yes, there is some question marks that are popping up, but at the same time, I can deal with those as they roll. Um, that for me is rest. That's better than, you know, getting into a, a deep sleep, just being able to drive through the middle of the farm and knowing, ah, okay, things are in their place. We're moving in the right direction, mm. you know, and that's a hard spot to find because you can find rest. Even when you're financially burdened, you can find that when your family's got issues. Um, I have a son right now that's going through cancer treatment. i my goal at 30 was to make a million dollars, shoot, made a million dollars, but I'm now $33 million in debt. So you look at all of these, you know, you look at all of these things that are moving around. Um, it's just how you prioritize them. Ooh. So I believe it's time for the cowboy quote of the day. The cowboy quote of the day is actually something that I've started saying. And that is this, that every day is not good, but there's good in every day. And I think what you're talking about is a a little along those lines is trying to find the good in every day. So even amidst a crazy stressful day, how you, how you find that good. 
and how yeah. you how you go about looking for that so that you can get that stress free spot in your soul, even if it's just for a, a a glimpse in time. You know, what do you love? That's 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 the whole thing. Do you love do you love the farm because it's a cash cow? Does it does it make you want to you know lay all of your hundred dollar bills out on your bed and roll around? Is that, is that why we farm? Is it, is it because you like to drink coffee and drive your old pickup and just watch the sun come over the mountain? Those are the things that, that I think that we have to truly understand and identify. Why do we do what we do? Why are, who are we and, and, and what makes us? You know, God, God created all of us uniquely and, and differently. But at the same time, the way that we're able to view our work. I mean, I don't go to the office when all the guys punch in anymore. We've got, a, we've got a new general manager. And so now I don't, one of my favorite things is to go outside the front office and as every employee came in, I would heckle every single guy that came to that door. Just good morning. How are your shoes untied? Good game. Good to see you. Oh my gosh. How's your dog? You know, your, your daughter's cute, whatever's going on. Just stand out there and just give all these guys a good hard time. And, um, and as, as we've transitioned, as we've got a manager in, and I'm not doing that now just by letting him, you know, establish himself in the company. It is, uh, one, it's hard, but two, it's made me realize even more that I do this for people. Mm. And that's what my driving is. I support 120 plus families. You know, not only do we feed, clothe, and do all of the stuff that farmers are supposed to do, but now... I'm the security for so many people and, and I want to make sure that I can do that. And that's, that's what sums up who Jay is. Jay loves, Jay loves God. He loves his family and he loves his employees. He wants to make sure that his industry is taken care of and represented well. And I want to make sure at the end of the day that I leave a legacy. It doesn't have to be about how much was in my bank or how big my farm was. My legacy is this, that Jay actually cared about what, what, what people needed and he did what was right. Ooh. And so on, on hard days when the world's collapsing, I've seen the managers called me twice. So who knows what's going on out there this morning? Uh, it's okay. You know, there's good parts. Uh, what, what was the cowboy quote of the day? <laughs> there, there may not, every day may not be good, but there's good in every day. Ah, man, it's so good. I'm going to get that tattooed on my neck. <clears throat> yeah. Put my name underneath it so that I can uh, be on your neck all the time. <laughs> you got it. <laughs> I was going to get my dad's uh, soul print of his foot on my neck, but no. <laughs> yeah, you probably shouldn't do that. <laughs> um, probably be my wife. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I think a lot of things that you said, we could go down a lot of different rabbit, tra rabbit trails there and, and go in a lot of different directions. But when it comes to dealing with stress, when it comes to dealing with agriculture and stress, uh, sometimes we really do forget who we are, why we do what we do, and what our ultimate mission is. And that really does boil down to people. As, as I previously traveled around the country, as you previously traveled around the country, I think that's one of the joys that, that we tried to share with people was that this is what we're doing is, is it actually isn't for us. It's, it's for other humans and, and to be able to live a life based upon what you're doing for other human beings can provide such fuel for your soul. Does that make sense? Absolutely. I mean, that, 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 I, I never in my wildest dreams thought that I would be a public speaker. You know, I, I never thought that I would, you know, chase you around the country and, get to talk to so many amazing people and um how many times have you heard well i'm just a farmer. i'm just i'm just a corn and soybean farmer i'm just a cotton farmer we we just have 10 acres we just have an old 40 20 john deere tractor you know jay i love your message it's so inspiring but we just have 20 cows and 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 that to me tells a huge story of what we think or where we're at in agriculture that we're just farmers we're just ranchers and we're not we're farmers we're ranchers that's what we do our occupation is to take that 20 head of cattle that 10 acres that old 4020 john deere tractor whatever it's going to be to take that 
and to use it in the most responsible, efficient, and don't ever say it, but sustainable manner that we can. And make sure that we're doing a good job to not only provide for our family and ourselves, but that we're going to empower our communities and we're going to feed our world. I mean, that's what we're here to do. And, and people lose sight of that. I only grow corn and soybeans, Jay. You know, my soybeans go into a mill that goes to a cow. You know, I'm like, well, that cow's feeding somebody somewhere. Or you know what? At least these red wing boots are pretty awesome. You know, and, and so if you correlate that back to agriculture, we're there somewhere. Well, don't you think that that all could also be uh, applicable to anyone listening in any profession? The I'm just mentality. Yeah, I, I mean, I, there, there's, there's, you look at people that work out all the time. I do at least. I look at, I look at people that have changed their, their model. I love seeing those success stories. Well, I was 500 pounds and now I'm 176 pounds and I did six Ironman back to back. Um, I think that stuff is inspiring, even though that I'm getting fluffier in my old age and I'm okay with that. Um, the, the, the bigger thing that I see with those stories is the fact that people just told them they were just people, right? Well, I'm just a fat guy and, and I, I, I'm incapable of doing this or I'm incapable of doing that. Uh, people get this down mentality or this down uh, the, the, the sky is falling and, and falling. And trust me, 2011, I was going broke. It was over. I was done. I lost. Uh, in my mind, I had lost everything. And I, all I could think about was my ego. Um, all I could think about was well, what's everybody going to say when they're at my farm with a big line of equipment and auctions going on. And, uh, and I know to this day that if that ever does happen, God forbid, if it did happen, I had to sell everything tomorrow um, that I have done the best that I can do in the situations that I've been put in. And um, so I do not fear failure. Uh, I, I look for my mistakes and I try to make those my successes. But at the same time, you know, so many people fear what the, the outcome is on the other side. The only person mm -hmm. that knows Who's going to change your future <laughs> besides you is God. And, uh, and you know, I, we, we talk daily and he hasn't come down and said, Jay, I'm going to tell you your game plan. He's going to say, hey, your game plan, plan is going to be forged in front of you. And the only way you can do that is by being you and doing that the right way. And so whatever that involves, I've got to be willing to accept. And uh, my willingness to accept stress is a higher threshold than most people. Ooh. Hey, that's good stuff, dude. You should, uh, you should start being a speecher, man. Uh, I'll work on that someday. <laughs> someday. <laughs> no, in all seriousness, man, that's, that's good stuff right there. Plus to everybody with, uh, with stress and, and I want to get into a little bit, something that you said earlier that I, I wanted to circle back to. And, and that is how do you deal with, with, stress and and everything else so there's we say that we can guns. sum up every do what i love guns no. <laughs> so we say every person on planet earth is the same and we, i can prove that every person on planet earth is the same because at our core we have the five basic same needs and that are five basic same same loves or what are our focus and that is our faith our family our friends our finances or what we do our job and then our fitness or and or our health and i say if you don't like if you don't if that last one doesn't show up on your list wait till it goes wrong and then it will impact everything on that list but at our core most of us would say the most important things in our life are our faith our family and our friends and what we do and and how we are and, and you've talked a lot about that already and indirectly. But the one thing that, that I think agriculture has that is so epically cool is this family, this family mentality or this, just this family nature that we have because of what we do. And, and it's not just what we do, it's who we are and everybody gets that. So we're, we're kind of a big family in agriculture as well. Whether you are that small producer or the great big the big farmer rancher in the sky, whatever it's this, it's still the same, still the same mission. So it's kind of a great common equalizer and common denominator. 
So one, we're family, but number two, when health happens, um, yeah, it just impacts every other bit of the five most important things in your life or the other four things. So you talked about your son. So tell everybody a little bit about your son and what you're going through with him and how, yeah, I mean, so, and how old he is. Yeah. So he is, uh, going to be 11 months, um, on the second and Hayes was diagnosed at five months with OMS. And I, I, every time I try to say it, I mess it up, but you can look it, look it up. It's a, uh, it's a rare syndrome that affects one in 10 million. Um, at least the way that it's attacked, uh, his immune system and nervous system, but essentially a tumor clings onto the spinal column and the tumor, um, will then dictate, uh, range of motion, cognitive ability, uh, and, and, and things like that. Un unfortunately, and very fortunately, uh, no tumor was found uh, with Hayes. So we're wondering if it's, it had regressed, you know, and most children that are um, diagnosed with this are usually older. Uh, they're usually two to 12. And so we're very fortunate in the fact that we found it this early, but he's going through 20 plus rounds of chemotherapy right now. And uh, we're on round, we just finished round three and he's, you know, he's beat to pieces already, but at the same time, he's just smiling and happy. And uh, he, you can just see the life in that little guy. And, uh, and that is something that is amazing to me because I, I for one, you know, being a dad, I, I would take it away in a heartbeat if I could. I would, I would take that chemo in stride if they would let me do it. But at the same time, I know that that's not what I can do. The only thing I can do is let him know that he's loved and, uh, and then I'll do anything for him. And at the same time, to watch his body just take the abuse and him just to smile and actually start to progress again where he's grabbing his feet and he's moving around and he's talking a little bit. Uh, to watch those kind of things, uh, knowing that we don't know what the outcome is going to be, but at the same time, um, just knowing that he, he knows he's loved and he knows that, that uh, life is pretty good. You know, he knows that every couple of weeks he's going to be sick, but at the same time, life is pretty good. And I'm like, man, why in the world can't I live like that? Ooh, no you know, why, 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 why can't I live like, you know what? People do love me and appreciate me. Why can't I live like, you know what? I, I, I have it a lot better than I thought. Yeah, there's going to be a couple of sick days in here, but at the same time, let's smile and just enjoy life. And that's, that's kind of how he's going. It's been, it's been huge. I mean, this is, you never, you, you hear it from everybody. You never think that you're going to, I was diagnosed with cancer uh, a couple of years ago um, with, with face cancer, with skin cancer and uh, went through that rigmarole. And, um, and you never think it would be you. You would never think it would be somebody in your family, but at the same time, you know, those are the things that really help. And unfortunately we've lost them numbers to similar things, but at the same time, it's a building block and it's, it lets you allow the opportunity to enjoy the small things more. And that's Hayes. He is, he's enjoying all of the small things as much as he can. That's Oof. powerful. How have you and how has this affected you and Katie's relationship? The stress that you've dealt with with him, and the stress with the farm and everything else. How 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 do you and Katie handle it? You know, it's it's a constant you know work in progress. You know, Alan Jackson's song "I'm a Work in Progress." <clears throat> that that is definitely that's definitely the story of our relationship. My wife married an outlaw. Um, you know, I should, should you say our wives married outlaws? Yeah, that's, that's probably <laughs> a good way to put married that. Married the outlaws. The Katie's married the outlaws. I um, you know, I, I I tell you what, I have I have drug my wife out here to the middle of nowhere. Um, our daughter was three days old, and I moved Katie into a twenty-eight foot camper in Dell City, Texas. And the first four months of living here, we lived in that through the winter, and. Uh, we had a farting dog and the heater didn't work and you had to worry about frozen poopsicles and all, all the stuff that you never thought that you would have to worry about. Uh, we, we got to go through that. Um, and that shaped us for who we are today and what we have to get through. Um, the time that we spend together since my world is busy has got to be quality time. And that's where I am at. I've got to make sure that when I go home, I'm plugged in. 
And there's some days she understands that Jay just can't plug in. Like he's just, you know what, he's probably going to go float around in the pool with, with his daughter with Harvest for a couple hours and just let him, you know, let him just float around for a minute because he's, he's not in good mental condition. But I, I know that after I, I have my 15 minutes or 30 minutes, I got to plug in and I've got to care about her. I've got to be together. And, uh, and so this is actually one of those building blocks that uh, I think we really needed in our marriage. I think this is something that it's firing things back up. Um, maybe not in the passion department, but it's firing things up in the fact that we've got to clean, you know, we've got to clean to each other uh, and, and, and get through the situation. Yeah, we talk a lot about, in the book, we talk a lot about your stress switches and how many stress switches you have turned on and you've got to be able to start turning those off that you may not even know about so that you can, excuse me, sorry, Stephen, that's that's all amazing stuff And, and in the book, we talk about how you have to turn off your stress switches and that's one of the things that you obviously are doing and, and have maybe not mastered, but at least recognize that you've got to be able to turn off the inflow so that you can plug in to what is the good, the powerful and the pure and, and, and put in the things that need to be, that need to be put in. How did you learn it's, to do that? Yeah, that's one thing I, I hope I don't give the perception that I've got it figured out because I don't. Um, I'm a man that needs as much grace as anybody can, can give me. Grace is, grace is far more valuable than debt at a bank. Um, and so finding, finding people in ways that allow me to be less stressed, um, finding an outlet. So um, I am extreme ADD. I'm extreme dyslexic. I mean, I, I, you, could, you could type a book backwards and I could read the whole thing and probably retain more backwards than I could reading it forward. But at the same time, um, for, for me to, for me to look at, uh, turning stress switches off, I think the biggest thing is, is to look at the situation that the stress is brought on by what caused, what, what action caused the reaction that's causing the stress and why would we do that again? Don't make that same mistake. Um, I am a serial entrepreneur. You know, some guy will come by and he's like, we're going to make pencils out of mesquite trees. And I'm like, that's the greatest idea ever. Let's just build a mesquite tree pencil making mill, you know, and I'll go home and Katie's like, so I've listened to your idea and it sucks. (laughs) And I'm like, wow. Wow. (laughs) <laughs> but I've I've learned now that my wife is a good voice of reason. And so if I'm going to think about something or a situation, I need to be able to have that, that conversation where not all of my ideas are good and turning the stresses off. Um, it's, it's tough, but at the same time, you got to find what works for you. Some people are like, well, I'm just going to the mountains for three days. I lose my mind. That is not, that is not peace to me peace is knowing that I still have cell phone service and if something happened that the guys could take care of it, but at least I'm in the loop. Um, to me, stress and and getting rid of stress also relies on a relationship with God and being able to give that and say, listen, I'm not capable of this. Um, it's so hard to have a, a, a faith today, right? I mean, it's so hard to be bold in faith. I don't walk, I don't walk the walk the way that I should, but at the same time, I understand that if I, if I don't continue to work on my relationship with God, and if I don't continue to live in grace, then there's just no way that I can get through it. And so it's tough. It's, it's tough. It's almost a burden to say that you're a Christian today in today's world. And the fact that people don't, you know, really want to hear that, but at the same way, uh, how is a 36 year old running multiple businesses all over the country and, and expanding literally monthly with a new business or a new venture? Or, um, and that's just because of God's grace mm-hmm. and the fact that I've got good people. And so the things that work keep the things that don't work. They're stupid. Some of your ideas are stupid. Get rid of them. Uh, that's fair enough. I don't think we could say it any better than that. 
Uh, brother, tell everybody a little bit about your podcast and a little bit about some of the things that, um, that uh, you want everybody to know as we, uh, as we head out the door. Yeah. So, uh, one, thanks for allowing me to be on your podcast, really. And, Are you kidding uh, me? Dude, it was, it was it, epic. It's, it's so fun to, it's so fun to learn from people, right? Um, you still there? Yeah. Okay. No, um, no video, but we're still here. It, it's so fun to learn from other people. Um, and, and while there is so many proud filled, you know, pride filled days that I've lived where I thought that I was able to, um, you know, I built this on my own and all of this kind of stuff to sit down and talk to somebody about what they've gone through and what they've learned is an amazing opportunity. I, I love, I love politics. Right. So I, I mean, I, I love politics and, uh, and so out here in the middle podcast is a podcast designed to talk about anything from soup to nuts in the, in the pantry. We can talk about religion. We can talk about politics, uh, the base and the cores in agriculture. We've had some, you know, pro rodeo cowboys on, we've had uh, producers for hit series on Amazon, uh, those kind of things. Now, but at the same time, it, it kind of ties its core back to agriculture because I'm a farmer and that's been a lot of fun. And then, and then social media has kind of blown up over the last couple of years. So Instagram and, and I don't do a whole lot on Facebook, but some, you know, and if you guys are, are looking to follow along, you're more than welcome to find Hill J 45 on Instagram, follow along and see what the madness of this, uh, of this process looks like. We try to put as much on there as we can. And, uh, it's, it's just a blessing every day. You do an amazing job, uh, telling the story of agriculture, telling your story, telling uh, the story of how you handle the days, the good, the bad, and the ugly. So I appreciate what you do. I appreciate how you do it. And more, pre more importantly, I appreciate who you are, brother. Hey, you too, man. And I, I want to tell you, Matt, that if it wasn't for you, um, my, enthusiasm for the occupation and my drive to share with other people and to help other people uh, would not be half of what it is because I've listened to you speak a couple times and I'll tell you what those those were the moments that the next morning when I was standing in the shower you know thinking through my day I'm like you know what there's some things that I can contribute to a couple of conversations and if it wasn't for Matt Rush you know giving me a talk about a snake in a bumper you know, I, I don't know what I, I, don't, I don't know what I'd be doing. So, so I really I, I, I appreciate all of the words of wisdom we've gotten to chat chat a couple times about where we're at in our speaking careers and and how that's working and uh, and, and I'm very very grateful for our friendship. Oh, brother, man, your words humble me. I appreciate that more than you more than you could know, especially in a time when we're not getting to talk and we're uh, not getting to travel and speak in front of groups, which is kind of you know feeds our souls. It's uh yeah you got to look for other ways to to handle that stress and and so your words uh, mean more to me than you know so I appreciate that. Stay strong, we'll uh, we'll get through this thing. You do the same, brother. And uh, thanks so much for joining us. For all of you who are listening, thank you for being a part of the Stress Free You show. Rem uh, just a friendly reminder, uh, invite your friends, invite your family, invite those that you know are stressed that need a little relief in their life because we love to help them have love, joy, peace, and the sound mind that every one of us was born to have. And we may just have gotten a little off track and forgot that we need it. So we'll see you next time on the Stress Free You show.